Okay, this, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. We're doing uh, Community Matters because community does matter with uh, Bill Kearns. Bill Kearns is the Director of Defense Programs at Oceanit. Welcome to the show, Bill. Thank you very much, Jay. Great to be here. We're going to talk about the, uh, the, the military in Hawaii today, uh, an uncertain future question mark. This is a program we're doing on Thursday, June 18th, just a few days away. Uh, at uh, Laniakea, the downtown uh, YWCA. And we are going to have several speakers. Uh, we are going to hopefully have a large crowd. We are going to explore well, the status of the military here in Hawaii, uh, what needs to be done, what should be done, what could be done in order to make sure that we continue our, our uh, love affair with the military, which we've had for 100 years plus. Uh, so, and Bill and I are working together on this. It's a think tech uh, ocean uh, co-presentation. So Bill, you know, tell them why they should come. Well, Jay, the, uh, the issue is, is always a very important one to, uh, to the citizens of Hawaii, to the business community here, uh, to uh, uh, even, even not just to Oahu. This, uh, this, the issue of military presence in Hawaii is, uh, it's, the military is a, part of the fabric of the community here. The uh, military is a way that Hawaii reaches uh, the world. And uh, so there's a lot of uh, change and uncertainty, uh, always as uh, defense budgets uh, ebb and flow, as our uh, congressional delegation um, tries to grapple with uh, issues in Washington and what is Hawaii's future role. Yeah, this is very interesting. You know, um, there are a lot of people in the community who are worried uh, with Dan and Oway's passing, that we won't have uh, all the pork that he brought to Hawaii, hundreds of millions, billions over the years. Uh, it affected the development of our state from statehood on forward. Um, it has been a huge resource in, in our economy uh, over all those years. And now he's gone, and the cloud he had in the Senate and in Congress is gone. And uh, the people who were close to it are worried the question is whether they should be legitimately worried or not. Uh, does the military have a lingering future with us? Will it continue in the way it has? Will the loss of all that defense spending have a profound effect on, A, the military being here, and B, the state economy in general? And we want to explore that. We have, we have several issues, several uh, panelists. Uh, we're going to have uh, like seven or eight panelists to discuss this from all sides. Um, we're going to have presentations followed by uh, Q&A with live SIFT, now called meeting SIFT. Uh, and people can ask questions on their cell phones and, for that matter, from home because we'll broadcast the sound of this program. Uh, so it's very important, I think, that people, you know, this is the kind of thing where you don't think about it because it's not immediate, it just happens. Uh, and arguably it's like the frog in the water getting boiled slowly. You don't realize what's happening until maybe it's too late. It's the kind of thing that we think, and I think you think, um, needs to be covered because if we don't cover it, things will happen that will surprise us or, you know, surprise us in a negative way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so this is a matter of raising public awareness and uh, engagement we need to have to make the business community, the community in general, aware of, a, of what could be. We don't know yet whether it will be, but what could be a very profound uh, and possibly detrimental change in our, in our economy and in, in, in the way our society works. Mm -hmm. uh, so <clears throat> remind them, will you, Bill, where and when? So uh, next Thursday, uh, June 18th, uh, 1130, we'll uh, be kicking off a panel discussion at the uh, Laniakea YMCA, YWCA, and we've got a, a Great panel lined up uh, so far, uh, Admirals uh, Fargo and Zlatiper, uh, along with uh, Jennifer Sabas, formerly of uh, Senator Inouye's office, have agreed to uh, participate in the panel. So issues ranging from Asia Pacific security and Hawaii's role uh, there uh, to um, the impact on the business community, uh, what, it, what it means to uh, how, how the military's role is evolving uh, in terms of uh, search and rescue operations, in terms of disaster response, and what it, what it means to those of us who live and work in Hawaii. That's Bill Kearns, Director of Defense Programs at Oceanit, our uh, co-presenter in this program. Uh, we're from ThinkTech. We're talking about community matters because they do. It does. 
and we're talking about the military in Hawaii, an uncertain future. So come on down to our program on June uh, 18th at Laniakea. You can sign up on thinktechhawaii.com. Thanks very much, Bill. Thank you, Jay. Aloha. Okay, we take a short break, and we're going to come back and discuss much of the detail that we weren't able to cover in this very small segment. We'll be right back with a detail about this program, the military in Hawaii. Hi, aloha. My name is Chris Leesom, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon, and on my show, I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. Thank you. Hi, I'm your host on Think Tech Asia, Bill Sharp. I look forward to, to you joining us each Monday between 4 and 5 o'clock uh, when we film right here in our studio in downtown Honolulu. The show, Think Tech Asia, focuses on contemporary events in Asia. And by Asia, we mean anything from Hawaii, south to Australia and New Zealand, well, west to Pakistan, and as far north as the Russian Far East. Clearly, this is one of the most economically dynamic centers of the world, uh, and we bring you up to date on what's going on in a whole host of countries in this very vital region. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. We're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech, and I'm here with Bill Kearns of Oceanit. He's the director of defense programs at Oceanit. And we're talking about a defense program indeed today here on Community Matters, the military in Hawaii, uh, an uncertain future. And that's the title of the program we're going to do on uh, June 18th, next Thursday, uh, together as co-presenters at Laniakea. And you know, Bill, as they say, in a program like this, you want to cover all the bases. Ooh. It's a good one. It's a good way to put it, Jay. And uh, I, I hope that the bases are out there and they're going to come cover us. So, you know, I mean, I, to me, I'm really interested in this, and I hope the public is. We'll see soon enough how interested yeah. they are, but I mean, and I'm happy that Ocean is interested. You know, you look back to uh, the, the days of the monarchy, the army was, the American army was there. Uh, you look at uh, the Spanish-American War, the end of that 19th century, the American army was here big time. Uh, we were an important staging base for the whole effort in the Philippines. Um, you look at World War I, there was a lot of troops here. All the big bases were established around that time. And in the, in, in the interim, uh, they continued to operate and, um, by, the, uh, by the Second World War. People don't realize, you know, so, so the Japanese were flying in and bombing Pearl Harbor. There was a Pearl Harbor. It was a huge base even then. You know, we had made a policy decision somewhere, somewhere in the first part of the 20th century that this was going to be a major military installation here. And your family was here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, that that uh, that role sort of reflects America's rise you know, after the Civil War to until uh, World War One to becoming uh, having a more global role. And uh, yeah, certainly a lot of American military uh, has uh, been based or passed through Hawaii over over many decades. Yeah, it's true. And uh, just schmoozing about it with you yesterday. Um, lots of families uh, here now were came here. I mean, as families in the military, mm -hmm. and it's not just you know from last month or last year. It's from the last hundred years. I mean, if, I mean, if I roll my own tapes back, how many people I know came here by virtue of the military all the way up through from World War One on forward? Um, this was a large military base here. And, and the military were an important part of the economy. And for that matter, I think, I've got to talk to a historian about this, but the power structure in general. I mean, if you have federal military troops here, by definition, um, say in 1930, they were an important force in the politics, especially because we were territory then anyway, responding to Washington in so many ways. Um, so, you know, the, the military came and they stayed, or they came back and retired. And so you have a, call it a cultural thread that has been going on for a long time where m the military is an essential part of the, of the mix of cultures and people and, you know, who live here. Mm -hmm. You can't deny that. I mean, I, and it's not like they came last week. 
they, they were here at the critical moments of the development of the state. Yes, and, and uh, it's, it's interesting as, as Hawaii's economy has evolved over the years, you know, the, the basic role of the U.S. military has, has remained the same. And, and having, having bases uh, in Hawaii, being uh, able to uh, support our allies and partners uh, out in Asia Pacific uh, and, and beyond, I mean, that's, that's, that role has, uh, has essentially uh, remained constant. Yeah. Yeah, and this was the this was home base for the Pacific, for the for the Asia Rim. Uh, I think what is what is interesting is that it, it, as you say, uh, you know, it, it part of uh, it was part of um, manifest destiny in the 19th century, but it, it has become a soldier diplomat in the 20th, mm -hmm. 20, 21st century. I remember how surprised I was. I was in the Coast Guard. I was surprised I was one time when the Coast Guard came out here. I mean, brass from Washington came out here and they took a, the biggest room they could find in the Holly Kalani Hotel and they invited all the Coast Guards from all the Asia Pacific countries to come and have a Coast Guard meeting. All the Coast Guards from all those countries. And it was in diplomatic fashion with a long table down the middle and candle. It was Washingtonian. It was European with candelabras, with the plural of candelabra. Candelabra. <laughs> it was it was really beautiful in dress mm -hmm. whites and mm -hmm. all this. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, "This is not Coast Guard. It's not military. It's diplomacy." Mm -hmm. And and the government, the military, you know, has taken that new role on in say recent years. I mean, I would say post Vietnam, mm -hmm. that's what's happened. We be, we that is the military have become diplomats into Asia, and you see all the Navy admirals who have spent time in in China. Mm -hmm. You know, talking to the brass in China, the Chinese brass. So, I mean, what's happened is we have become a kind of uh, parallel to the State Department or working with the State Department and dealing with, with uh, foreign policy. That's what's happened. Yeah, it's, it, it's very true. I think, I think that's been the case for, for many years, but, but recently that, that role has become more amplified. Yeah. Uh, you know, more, uh, a more proactive uh, way of looking for uh, security relationships, uh, helping, uh, you know, working with our allies to build their own capacity for security, uh, and uh, or even medical missions. Uh, I had the uh, great privilege of uh, participating in the uh, USNS Hospital Ship Mercy Pacific Partnership mission uh, some years ago, and uh, we visited five nations in Southeast Asia and Oceania, and just to see the role of uh, our sailors, soldiers, doctors, engineers, uh, working with uh, NGOs, working with the State Department, working with international partners to um, yeah, deliver uh, medical services, uh, to uh, work with other militaries to pr help pre them prepare for disaster response. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a, it's a great role for, uh, for the military. So, so uh, much more than remaining on on a base here in Hawaii or elsewhere, waiting for war. Uh, waiting for war. We're <laughs> no. we're we're a much better tool out there, engaged uh, and uh, and helping prevent conflict. Yeah, and as um, you know, you talked about disaster relief. Uh, both the military and the National Guard here, uh, I, they're really part of the same thing. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, they have been involved in every significant disaster in the Pacific, uh, Pacific Rim area and going out there and help people. And I think it's, it's really interesting how all of that has changed and how the military station here have changed and the whole role of the military. It's like, you know, when I was in the Coast Guard, we started out, we were guarding the coast, rum runners, that kind of thing, you know, and running uh, revenue, lighthouses. Revenue and, cutters. And revenue that, yeah. cutters, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in times of war, remember this, the treas they were attached to the Treasury Department. Mm -hmm. Times of war, they, they flipped over into the Navy. That's the way it worked. Um, but, but all that's changed now. It's not only diplomacy, it's, it's uh, environment, it's oil spills, yeah. it's port security. Yeah. Uh, so many additional roles. And it's the same thing in every military branch. Uh, they have taken. We have all taken additional roles. Yeah, it's really true. It's uh, the you know one of the one of the functions of the Coast Guard, of course, um, 
basically out to 200 nautical miles from U.S. Uh, territory. And the, uh, uh, the Coast Guard works with nations in, in the Pacific Island nations to uh, uh, help them with their own, with their own capacity. These uh, small Pacific Islands, they, they can't uh, possibly surveil the uh, economic zones that they, that they have. And, and the fish represent the resource, maybe, you know, they're few, one of their few resources. So, uh, so yeah, to, to your point, the, the Navy and the Coast Guard have worked together uh, in something called the Oceania Maritime Security Initiative. And, and it's a non-traditional role for the Navy. You, know, you, don't, you don't necessarily, you know, you're not going to need to shoot the guns. From? You now don't need guns do or this, missiles. You know? <laughs> right, right. And so, so uh, I, I was the Commodore of uh, the Destroyer Squadron at Pearl Harbor, and, and I told my staff, we're going to, the next, the next big thing, fish. And, and so sure it's uh, the tuna belt uh, that we're, where our, our partners uh, down in uh, Oceania need some help. Well, you know, it's, it's presence. I mean, it's not all humanitarian. It's not all scientific. Uh, it's not all economic, for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's presence. And, um, you know, uh, the Navy especially. I'm not sure why I say that. You probably have a better understanding than I. But, but it's a matter of, ha of, be, of, of being present in as many places as you can be and touching as many countries as you can touch. Uh, right now, we've had a number of shows here in our uh, series called... Uh, Think Tech Global uh, and Think Tech Asia, uh, where we have found that we're competing with the Chinese in this very way. Aside from you know their current thing about occupied, occupying islands, uh, they try to establish uh, soft power relations mm -hmm. with every country they can establish them with. Um, it's an extension of, of military operations is what happens. And they're there uh, to help people ostensibly and to do economic, you know, give them loans, benefits, but they're really, you know, they're creating a presence, and that presence helps them strategically. So if you want to talk about global strategies for any country these days, you've got to talk about presence, and presence comes in all kinds of packages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the military is the best organization to do that, and the best home base, I would argue, is Honolulu. Uh, no doubt about uh, Honolulu being the best place to operate from, and uh, but I, I I think it's you know the military brings some some special capabilities. You've got a big workforce, got uh, great logistics capacity. We can we can get things done. Got a you know planning, uh, just action oriented, and but team the military up with. NGOs, as we do on Pacific Partnership, as the Air Force does with Pacific Angel, uh, any any number of operations, as as you do in uh, any disaster response, um, that's that's the power of it. Is doing it during peacetime or during, and and so that you're ready to do it yeah. when uh, when yeah. a problem comes up. So over the years, um, these bases in Hawaii have uh, you know mostly expanded. Uh, they have, uh, you know, developed um, all kinds of strengths and facilities. They have kept up with the technology. I'm reminded of Kaneohe uh, a Base in Kaneohe, uh, where there was a, a colonel there by the name of Rice. I don't know if you ever knew him. He was the base commander, and he adopted, he adopted clean energy. And he did amazing things because you already know that a commander of a base has a lot of power. Yes, he does. <laughs> And he woke up one morning and said, I'm going to make this base clean energy. And he was able to do that. And it was, was admirable what he did. Um, so it's that kind of management possibility that can allow Colonel Rice or anybody so situated uh, to do remarkable things. And take that together with Dan Inoue and his, his twist in Congress. Uh, we, we brought down a lot of money. Um, well, one speaker we had in one of our programs called him the franchise, <laughs> but predicted that he wouldn't last forever, and he didn't last forever, and, and the money, you know, uh, I think he was criticized at the end for all the pork, um, the earmarks, whatnot. There was some controversy about that. And, and at the end of the day, at least what I hear, it, it largely dried up. Uh, and the question is, what, what happens? Is, is it bad that it dried up? 
uh, in a way, maybe it makes us more self-reliant as a state. Maybe it makes the military commands here more self-reliant, that they don't get it from all directions the way it was coming. Um, it certainly makes the tech industry more self-reliant because they don't, they don't have so much dual-use money anymore. Um, so the, you know, I guess the question is, uh, should we be hanging our head in, in, in depression now? Uh, or should we find another way to move all this ahead? Um, our relationship, that is the state's relationship with the military here, has to be affected by this. Um, how is it being affected? Uh, what can we do to improve the relationship and make it as robust as, as it ever was or even more? Um, and that, in large part, that's the subject yeah. of discussion. You know? Yeah, and, and that's, I, I think our panelists next uh, Thursday, uh, the 18th, will be, uh, will be able to give us some great perspectives on, on just those issues that you point out, uh, Jay. Um, yeah, certainly, Senator Inouye did so much for the state, but the, um, Hawaii has so many natural advantages when it comes to its strategic, its strategic location, uh, the, uh, the facilities that are here, uh, you know, we're the uh, Pacific Missile Range out at, uh, on, on Kauai is, is, is unparalleled in, in its uh, ability to support subsurface, uh, you know, submarine training, uh, surface training, aviation, and even space, and then integrate all those things. Uh, so, so it's it's a it's really a national treasure, uh, and it and it's unique. The uh, Pearl Harbor Shipyard is is such an important uh, capacity for ship repair. When uh, when you consider the Navy operating forward out in the Western Pacific, uh, and in the in the Indian Ocean, and even into the Middle East. Being able to have that ship repair f uh, capacity here and uh, the, the uh, people who work at the shipyard and the skills that they have on, on doing uh, nuclear power uh, uh, maintenance, on you know, the dry docks, it's, it's, it's really an, an important component of what the, uh, what the Navy does. And so, so, so many natural advantages here in Hawaii. Uh, the presence of uh, U.S. Pacific Command, which is the largest joint force command in the world. Covering the largest square yeah, miles, too. Yeah, it, it is. It's like 50% of the Earth from, uh, from, the, uh, from California coast out to uh, the uh, border of uh, India and Pakistan in the Indian Ocean. And so, so it's an enormous responsibility that the Pacific commander has. And, and he's, uh, the, the, the commander has the service component commanders all co-located here in Oahu. No other geographic joint commander has that advantage. So we've got Navy, Air Force, Marine, Army component commands here, Coast Guard, District Command, and uh, and so so that's a. Uh, it's so well established here in Hawaii that uh, I I like to think that it's. Uh, you know, just just become it's a, a, it's a connection part of it's an identity it, it's an identity it is that we enjoy all of us here enjoy the identity you know uh, I, I mean I, I know it's uh, it's a long shot but North Korea uh, you know threatens these missiles and they say they can reach Hawaii mm -hmm. um, and then there was something in the paper recently about how our air defense system wasn't really equipped to deal with those missiles and and, you know, I mean, at first you say, this is a joke, this is not serious. But I feel, I mean, I feel a lot better knowing the military is here protecting us, uh, you know, because we're the most you know, isolated set of islands in the world. And then, you know, we're 2,500 miles from the nearest continent. Mm -hmm. um, and we need somebody to, to watch over us. And we need somebody to defend us in case anyone takes a poke at us like the way the Japanese did in 1941. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, uh, I, I'm, I personally am comforted by that. Um, but I suppose not everybody agrees on it. And some people think that this, uh, that Hawaii was and is a, an occupied place, occupied by the United States, occupied by the American military. And one of the things I think we want to find out in this program is exactly what the state of thinking is about that. Mm -hmm. You know, here in the lull after Dan and Oway's death, here at a time when we have arguments over uh, the science at the top of mountains, <laughs> here in a where, where all progress is questioned, 
uh, not just real estate development, but all right. progress is questioned. Uh, I think everybody has to be aware of how everybody else is thinking. And this is one area where people really haven't, haven't touched. And I think the program, hopefully, will, will cover that. Um, how do people feel about, about the military? How does the military feel about being here? Um, can we improve that relationship? Uh, can we, you know, what's the word? Uh, nakodo. Nakodo, it's a Japanese word. It means remarry. Remarry your spouse. <laughs> okay. At, you know, at a certain point in the, um, uh, you know, the aging of your marital mm -hmm. relation, uh, it's a very charming custom where you remarry your spouse. And so uh, maybe we should think about remarrying and get everybody on the table and, and appreciate each other all the more. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's a really important question. You know, what, what's the relationship moving forward? And I think there are, there, there are certainly people and organizations who are, have been for many years working on, on that and uh, uh, people who are trying to rejuvenate you know, the uh, military affairs Council of the Chamber of Commerce is uh, actively uh, working to identify what's the what's the situation, what's what's the strategy, how how to how to uh, make sure that Hawaii uh, supports the military, uh, uh, that that the economic benefits, that the uh, cultural community benefits are are understood by on both sides, and. Yeah, the uh, the military, the Defense Department shouldn't take Hawaii for granted. It's uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, sensitivities that that uh, we're very good at um, handling uh, when we're operating in that diplomat mode uh, mm -hmm. overseas. Mm -hmm. But uh, but at home, we also need to be very and and I and I think that uh, as a as a former naval officer, I I, I think the uh, the uh, services are uh, you know generally do so much uh, in terms of taking care of the environment, uh, making sure that the bases are, uh, are well cared for, that uh, you know, Kauai has uh, several protected species. Uh, yeah, so, so there, and, then, and then outreach programs. Um, yeah, the uh, DOD has a very good program to uh, help support both uh, financially and other, way, other ways the uh, Hawaii DOE. We need, we need a lot of that, actually. Uh, one, of, one of the, um, I'm writing an article about this, too. I always write articles about the subjects that we do these programs. And um, one, of the, one of the things that sticks in my mind is just suppose um, the Army wanted to establish a new base, a brand new base. Mm -hmm. and, and it had the land, I mean, federal land, and it wanted to establish a new base. Would that be smooth? Or would there be resistance? Well, I think we could guess there'd be a fair amount of resistance, and how serious would the resistance be, and how would all that end up? Um, so, I mean, you, you always have the risk of, of a misunderstanding of resistance. And so in order to uh, avoid that, in order to deal with it in advance, and make it smooth it out in advance, um, it's really good to have those kinds of connections on a regular basis. Uh, it's, it's imperative, yeah. So, so the Navy a couple years ago was talking about trying to base an aircraft carrier at Pearl Harbor. That would be a major change, and you know ultimately it didn't it didn't pan out. But that communication. So when the Navy was that the Stennis? Uh, it wasn't a particular aircraft, carrier, aircraft carrier. Just uh, looking at would it make sense to to put a carrier strike group here? Yeah. And 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 really, it, I think it came down to where do you put the airplanes, the carrier air wing that goes along with the carrier, and and then the costs of upgrading. So, uh, you know, when the when the uh, Navy uh, based a or uh, forward deployed a uh, aircraft nuclear powered aircraft carrier to Japan, Yokosuka, uh, lots of work, lots of communication that went on Japan to U.S. bilateral, and that uh, that led to a successful introduction and and operations and 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 now. You know, it's, uh, there is it, a nuclear carrier in Japan. Yes, yes. Good work. And, and that wasn't so, easy, I'm sure. So it's a, uh, you know, it it can th these things can be done now. Uh, do you know? Would we need to put any more base in Hawaii? I, I, 
I doubt it. It's only yeah. a hypothetical yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I remember years ago, um, oh, I guess it's, it's, it's a different time, 70s or the 80s it was, um, and there was a, there was a, some kind of gathering. It was, it was established by the Navy on Fort Island. Now, Fort Island was a different place then, too. It, it's mm -hmm. different now. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody took, uh, no, there was no bridge. It was, you know, to take a ferry. A yeah. Ferry. Mm -hmm. And everybody took the ferry, and they took their picnic mats, and they took their, you know, igloos and uh, all that stuff. And they went, and they had this big picnic, and there were games and things. And I said, gee, this is, this is really great, because everybody is recreating in the, in, the, in the center, in the lap of the Navy, uh, and everyone felt so good about it. But you know what? I can't remember one since then. And maybe that's the kind of thing, you know, however it's done. Uh, that would help bond us up, not only for the Navy, but for all the military services, to, to raise consciousness. So one of, the, one of the points of examination that we should do in this program is to see what the status of it is. Uh, do people know what's going on? Do they appreciate what's going on? Uh, do they have a good social feeling ab about it mm -hmm. uh, at the front end right now? You know, the reality is uh, that there's an awful lot of people in the society here that, are, that came from the military. Huge yeah, number there, there are. I think it's uh, around 10 percent of yeah. uh, Hawaii's population right. are veterans. And um, but to the point of uh, people being able to you know, come on on base and see what's happening, uh, I remember bringing some of my uh, children's their their friends to our our home at Pearl Harbor, and it was the they had been you know, born and grown up in Hawaii, but uh, that was their first time on Pearl Harbor. So think how many times you drive, they, they drove past Pearl Harbor, yes. never went on board the uh, Naval Station. Yeah, they tend to make all these assumptions and, and you, you, know, you don't have a, uh, you have the right attitude about it unless it's refreshed every now and then, somehow. Yeah, don't that's know really true. So we should talk about that. Uh, we're going to come back in a minute and talk about the specific issues and some of the speakers that we've lined up for this program uh, and see if we can entice you to, to sign up and come down and, and be part of it. Uh, that's Bill Kearns. He's retired uh, Navy captain. Uh, he's with Oceanit now as the director of defense programs. You're here watching Community Matters, and we're talking about a program that we're doing together on uh, June 18th called uh, The Military in Hawaii, uh, An Uncertain Future? Question mark which means it may or may not be uncertain. Maybe it's not uncertain. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll find out. <laughs> Ted Ralston, folks, host of our show at Think Tech Hawaii called Where the Road Leads, where we talk about technology influencing the future of Hawaii. Technology, of course, is the art of solving problems. We always bring in interesting and informed guests who can see from different perspectives and different points of view how that future might unfold and how technology can assist us in getting there. So once again, join us 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Fridays, uh, Ted Ralston, your host. And please, if you have ideas that you'd like us to address on this show or folks who you think should be on it, let us know. Aloha, I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at Think Tech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m. to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out. Well, if you, if you didn't know, ThinkTech does have a Twitter account. And we encourage people to write in and send us tweets. Uh, this is today we're doing a, a, a discussion uh, with Bill Kearns on the military in Hawaii, an uncertain future, question uh, mark, which will take place uh, as a joint uh, presentation at Lani Akea on uh, June 18th. But we encourage people to send in tweets. Our, our Twitter address is ThinkTechHi, H-I, okay? And somebody did because they saw that we, they could send in tweets. And here in the studio while we're doing the show, we can look at um, those tweets. So this is a tweet from a fellow named Mark Ward. Thank you, Mark, for sending in your tweet. He says, here is my unpopular quotes, uh, comment, and question. Please note that I live on the mainland. The military is wonderful, he says. I could not do what they do. 
I know nothing about deployment where the military needs to be, that is, where the military needs to be. If a country is measured by its budget, follow the dollars, then the U.S. is a war machine. The DOD budget is enormous. Compare it with education and so forth. With so many competing priorities in our country, is it time to recruit talent for different initiatives? Has the military become a jobs program for the business of war? That's a pretty complex question. Thank you for that question, Mark Ward. So, <clears throat> what do you think, Bill? What do you think of that question? What do you? What do you? What comes to mind? Yeah, it's a, I mean, it, it, it's a great question. Thank you, thank you, Mark. And and uh, it, it's a, it's a it gets to the bigger issue of, in in my opinion, what what is the what's the role of the federal government and uh, what's the role of state governments? Uh, what should our tax dollars uh, be doing? And as as citizens, are we engaged enough? Uh, educated enough, versed in the issues, and out advocating for what we what we believe. Uh, there are, you know, it's a, it's, it's, as you said, it's a, it's a complicated uh, question. Yeah. Um, you know, at Oceanit, we deal with um, technologies that, that we hope are going to really be world changing, and they're, they may be green energy technologies. Uh, we've, we have. Uh, uh, astronomers, we have uh, yeah, information technology cut it, that, that's cutting edge. So we're, we're always looking at possibilities. And, uh, and, and, and but we also, we also do uh, work with the Department of Defense. Uh, we work with, uh, on, on behalf of national security. Uh, and uh, it's a, it's a you know, we, we think it's an important important role to play, but um, do we, uh, I think we all aspire to a, a world where we wouldn't need. Well, yeah, and I, and can I take off on that a little? I happen to be one of those guys in the crowd that feels bad that we dropped off the draft. I think the draft was a piece of Americana, a piece of the democratization of national yeah. defense. Yeah. It was so important. It's, it's more than the uh, Peace Corps. It's more than national services and an NGO, and, and a lot of people don't do that either. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's uh, it's connecting up with the identity of the country in the in the global platform, and I and I think a lot of people don't realize that freedom doesn't come cheap, and that protecting whatever we have here in this country doesn't come automatically. Mm -hmm. And if we just drop the whole thing about defending ourselves, we would be in deep kimchi, and soon. The fact is, the way, the fact is, no surprises here, we're all mammals. And mammals sometimes get aggressive, okay? And this country needs to defend itself, make no mistake. And frankly, I think we have to have a strong military, especially in these times when other countries are developing small, or strong militaries, even nuclear weapons, even. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, mm -hmm. do, countries that shouldn't be doing that are doing that. And so we, we can't drop our defense. We cannot. Um, you know, minimize it in any way. It's really critical to our survival as a people, as a country, as a democracy. Full disclosure, that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah, and 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 at the same time, we have to be very smart about it. You know, the, the the Pentagon's budget is you know, over six six hundred billion dollars annually. So, so uh, how 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 are those resources you know, being used? And um, and you make a great point about the people who who serve. You know, um, in the, uh, for for many years there was there was a draft. Uh, yeah. So so all of pretty much all of uh, U.S. society had had some understanding right. of military service, and uh, and and there's there's you know interesting literature out there now about how. Uh, the military may military's uh, culture and values uh, may have may be diverging from the you know, society at large. This so is not a good thing. So how how do we make sure that that doesn't they happen? have to be aligned? Yeah, yeah. 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 Whenever, and whenever that kind of misalignment happens, it's bad for both yeah, sides. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know, to me, I think. Um, um, the best thing that a young person can do after school or even before school is national service of some kind. The military is a wonderful way to do national service because it holds the country together. It makes that individual um, understand for his whole life 
what the country is and that it doesn't come cheap. Yeah. You have to defend it. You have to serve it at some point. And I think, unfortunately, we've gone in several generations since the draft was, uh, was terminated. And all those generations do not, do not understand this point. So there's a, on an individual level, there's a, a lot of uh, 18 to 22 year olds that do a lot of growing up and, uh, and learning how to, how to have responsibility and accountability and uh, get stuff done. And, and uh, then they take that back to uh, uh, the farm in Iowa or, the, uh, or back to the city in yeah. Houston and, 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 and they... Yeah. And they have better yeah. citizens and, for And it. they're better citizens and for And the country is better for better citizens. Is that something, yeah. you know? Yeah. We have to be careful because uh, when you're on the top, there's only one place to go. If you don't watch out, mm -hmm. you fall mm -hmm. off the top. Anyway, um, can we talk about uh, the specific questions we're going to try to, uh, uh, you know, have discussed here and uh, the people we're looking for and that we've found, okay? For example, opening remarks at this program on uh, June 18th by Ian, Ian Kitajima, yes. who, uh, who used to run the dual use group uh, for, you know, all these science projects uh, that Ocean and others were involved in, and that was very valuable. So he's going to make opening remarks. And then we're going to have uh, somebody talk about how people feel about the military, uh, what, the, what the culture in Hawaii is about the military. We've talked about how the, the, the two are inter, inter, interconnected, intertwined after all these years, but how do they feel each other, feel about each other right now? Uh, I'm really interested in how that me, plays me out. Me too. Me too. That would be, a, I think, a really fascinating discussion. And we'll have a, we'll have a, a historian to talk about that because it's not just a snapshot. It's a continuum. Yeah. It's an evolution. Um, okay, then we'll talk about uh, the military who are here, active duty, the military who are, I guess, reserves, the military who are retired, the military presence and, uh, you know, its, it's, 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 its participation in the community. Um, and we'll talk about, uh, you know, wh what that means to the economy of the state to have them here. I mean, I, it's, it's clear that if you took them away one day, poof, like that, that would not be a good thing for our economy. Okay, then military spending, one kind or another. Jennifer Sabas is going to come around, yeah? Yes, and uh, so she's... she's uh, Who is she? Jennifer uh, worked for uh, uh, Senator Inouye for, uh, for many years, and so she's, she's very familiar with uh, the issues, uh, the workings of uh, Washington, D.C., and, uh, and well-known here in the Hawaii uh, community. So, so she's a, uh, an important leader with the Military Affairs Council of the Chamber of Commerce. And yeah, we need a minute or two uh, more to uh, just go through the rest of these issues. Uh, we're we're going to cover the, the changes of the way the military works in the 21st century because it has changed, it is changing dramatically. We referred to that earlier, uh, you know, about foreign policy and uh, um, diplomacy and all. Uh, but we have a great speaker on that subject. Who is that? Yes, and so uh, uh, we're looking forward to hearing from Admiral Tom Fargo. Uh, and uh, former uh, commander of U.S. Pacific Command here in Hawaii, well known here in uh, in Hawaii, and uh, we're hoping that he can talk about the uh, Hawaii's role in the national strategic rebalance to Asia Pacific, and and how the how Hawaii you know fits into that, and why Hawaii is so important. Yeah, we want to we want to look at uh, how how Hawaii plays in in a changing environment. In the pivot, we've had a lot of shows about that by think tank uh, people who mm -hmm. come and try to figure out the implications. And, and those implications always, always involve the military. Mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the program, part of the process. And then, of course, we'll also talk about what's happening in Washington. Uh, who likes Hawaii? Who doesn't like Hawaii? What are the considerations and factors and, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the issues involved? in making us, in continuing our marriage, in making our marriage mm -hmm. more robust, mm -hmm. or maybe in pulling troops out of here. And we want to get a handle on that. And that has a direct effect, I think, on everybody in the state. They don't realize it, but by virtue of the, the troops, the families, uh, the retired people, and the, the ongoing defense spending here with the, you know, the equipment and the, the bases, uh, it's definitely a huge part of our economy. Yes. And if for any reason it diminishes, we are going to have a diminished economy. Yes, there, there's been an enormous investment. Um, there's uh, uh, the, to the question of uh, 
do, does what happens on Capitol Hill uh, matter here? Yes, yes, it does. Uh, what can Hawaii do to uh, to influence it is is important. And um, how, uh, you know, but but again, I'd come back to the natural advantages that that Hawaii has, and uh, you know, that that sort of make the case for continuing to play an important role. Yeah, and we'll have Admiral uh, Zapp Slatterford who actually uh, left the Navy a long time ago after a brilliant career um, and got to be a trustee of the Campbell Estate, where he served for many years. And I think he's now uh, still associated with the corporation, the Campbell Corporation. Anyway, it's a, it's a really blue ribbon crowd. Uh, and they're going to tell us things we don't know. Uh, come down on June 18th uh, at the Lania Kea. Uh, it starts at 1130. Sign up at thinktechhawaii.com and you will understand things that you need to know for years to come. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you, Jay. A real pleasure. Aloha.